So anything fermented food would be very beneficial for a your beer, uh, beer yeah. <laughs>Okay, so we have Mary here. Hi, Mary. Hi. How are you doing today? Doing good. Okay, so we have started my fungal nail program about a month ago, so we just uh, seen her for the second time. So I'm just uh, cleaning this nail out and grinding it thinner so that when she puts some medication and soaking and drying and all the other things that I tell her to do, it's going to be more effective. So I usually see her monthly for a little while, and then, then we can go to our regular every couple of months of grinding and cutting and making sure the nail is as good a condition as can be so that uh, it can get better. So here we go without me keep talking. We're just cutting now. So and Mary and I were talking about uh, fungus infection. Right, Mary? Right. Okay. And then Mary is very open about new way of treating this, right? Yes. Okay. Sounds good to me. Right. So, but you told me it's some challenges about the, the, all the program that I've been telling you to do, right? Right, it requires a lot of concentration. <laughs> concentration and focus. Well, a lot of time too, right? And time. Yeah. yeah. So unfortunately, we, we all think that putting some medication or taking medication by mouth would uh, get rid of this fungus. And I've tried that for the last 30 years, then didn't really work that well. And it was across the board, all the patients, because... Uh, it just uh, it would get better a little bit and then it came right back when they kind of slacked off on doing things So I created a whole program. It's called the 30-day challenge Well, it's more than 30 days, but uh, we, we do every 30 days and then I, I I make sure that patients are doing it Right Mary? Right. So what, what was so challenging about the, the thing? Which part? Uh, you told me briefly about the soaking Right, the soaking and putting it into a schedule, which I wasn't good at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, that's a tough part, huh? Yeah, I kind of think of it though, it, like when I was getting into flossing. Flossing was just kind of hard to get into. <laughs> flossing, okay, yeah, yeah. in the beginning but, at least. Huh? Yeah, once I did it for like three weeks or so, it's like uh, now if I don't do it, it doesn't feel right. Right, it's right. It's just part of the routine. Right, so it takes some time because we ask the patients to soak it, clean it in the shower with toothbrush and then when you come out of the shower use a um, like a hair dryer to dry it because when 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 um, the nails are dried then fungus cannot live because they live off of um, moisture and water and then they like dirty environments so we need to keep cleaning it uh, in addition to putting medications on and then you have to soak it because soaking is really important we need to alkalize the area now they Fungus live in an um, acidic environment, so we want to alkalize the area by using things like tea tree oil, Epsom salt, and baking powder, things like that, alkalize the environment, and then, and then fungus slowly, they don't die that quickly though, fungus slowly, they die off. So it takes usually about six months to a year, which is a tedious process. But in the process of all this, actually, people feel a lot healthier. They lose weight because I tell people to not eat sugar, right? Yes. Is, 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 is that hard? Tell me That's about that. That's another challenge, yes. Yes, yes. So what, what kind of sugar you you like? Oh, it's like ice cream. <laughs> ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't like ice cream? Yeah. Uh -huh. How often do you have to have it? Oh, it's not like I absolutely have to have it. I just like it once in a while. Uh-huh. But then if I buy it at the store, then I have it there, and then I have to eat it. Right. So the best thing to do is just not buy it. Right. Are you kind of the person that you have to just finish what you start? Yes. Yeah, I'm like that too. So I, if I don't want to do something, I shouldn't even start because I'm, I'm so eager to finish, you know, <laughs> food and whatever, you know, right? Yeah, it's the competitiveness. Thing. Right, right. You just have to get it done. And... Um, you, how about your supplements? Are you taking some supplements or no. what? No. Okay. So I usually tell people to take some anti-inflammatory supplements, uh, which are really good, which are like omega-3, vitamin D, which is really crucial. Oh, I do have di vitamin D every two weeks. Oh, you do? Oh, you yeah. take a, like a large dosage? Oh, I forget how much it is. Uh, they usually give like 50,000. You have to take once a week or? Mm, every two weeks. Every two weeks. Oh, okay. Your vitamin D level was low? Sure, I have that through my um, rheumatologist. Oh, really? 
Yeah, vitamin D is one of the most crucial uh, vitamin Ds, I mean, uh, uh, vitamins out there because without that, it is known to cause 19 different types of cancer. So that's how important vitamin D levels are. It's the, it's the number that you have to know, just like your blood sugar level or blood pressure. Vitamin D level is the must uh, number you have to know. I know a lot of people don't even know their vitamin D level, which is a devastating problem. Yeah, nobody talks about it except my rheumatology doctor. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's good for your bones, right? It produces your bones. Yeah. It produces um, uh, cholesterol. I mean, it, it's it's a, it's it's like a it's more than a vitamin. Actually, it's a it's a hormone that really does thousands of different things, different functions in your body, and it's very important. So, and then obviously your immune system, because without that your body kind of falls apart. You can get sick a lot. You can get uh, flu or every seasonal flu you're gonna get, you know? Okay, let me go over here. So, so vitamin D is crucial and then omega-3 and then we recommend probiotics. You take any probiotics, Mary? No. Okay, probiotics is very important because 60 to 80 percent of your immune system uh, resides in in your gut in your colon so if you don't have good bacteria in there then you can get fungus infection virus infection obviously even cancer so you really need to take some good probiotics uh, probiotics are very very expensive out there i take a couple different brands uh, daily for myself but they're very expensive and i'm lucky enough to be a korean person we have access to um, kimchi. I don't know if you've heard of kimchi? Mary? Mm, I think so. You know, it's a cabbage, like a marinated cabbage. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some people don't like it, but a lot of people, once you learn um, the taste of it, it's really good. And it has over 900 different strands of probiotics. It's one of the strongest uh, superfood in the world is kimchi. Or you can have sauerkraut and some I people, you know. I hate that. Oh, yeah, that, you tried it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sauerkraut is, wh wh why is it kind of dull? No taste, huh? It's just icky. Icky, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So, anything fermented food would be very beneficial for like your... Beer? Uh, beer, yeah. <laughs> That's a good idea, huh? Um, unfortunately, beer is from grains, and it's, uh, even though it's fermented, it's not good for your gut. Uh, once in a while is okay, obviously, but it's definitely not good for your fungal toenail. They, fungus loves beer. Oh, well, I don't usually drink it. I was just at an Oktoberfest on Sunday and there was all this beer around. Oh, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, a few of my patients are over there in Germany right now oh. in the Oktoberfest. Wow, that's serious stuff. Yeah, that's serious. They're, they're, <laughs> they're drinking it like water over there, so... Yeah, they're very excited to go there. I'm, I'm excited <laughs> to see them back and show me their pictures of Drinking all the beer in the big jugs, you know. I yeah, wanna... those steins are very pretty. They uh, uh -huh. they make them there in Germany and elsewhere, I'm sure. Uh -huh. When I was in Germany years ago, I uh -huh. got a beer stein, but I just have never used. What's the beer stein? Is it like it a... holds the beer? It's like a it's like a jug. Ceramic. It's very pretty and it's very intricate and has uh, carvings and designs and oh, really? usually crests like from old Germany. Uh huh. They're very they're very neat. So you, you, you get your own and then you walk around and get more? Is that what happened? Well, yeah, you could refill it and put more beer uh, in it. Really? I don't think yeah. I've ever seen that. Okay, so... I'll get you one for Christmas. Really? Oh, yeah. good. <laughs> now now I have to drink more beer. <laughs> so I don't drink a lot of it, but sometimes I do. Well, you can use it for other beverages, I'm sure. Oh, absolutely. We, we Koreans drink uh, this, uh, this thing called soju. It's uh, really good. Especially with a little bit of Korean barbecue, it, it's it's really good stuff. So, you okay, Mary? Is it hurting or no? No, it's just it's such a nerve or something. Uh huh. So when did you go to Germany? When, when was that? Uh... 1971. Oh really? Oh, that's well back. Yeah. I've never been to Germany. It's a nice country. I heard it's really clean there. It is. Yeah. Like everything's so organized. Yeah, Germans are pretty organized. Yeah, they're really organized, right? Eh? I went to Japan last year. Oh my God, the whole country was super organized. No trash on the street. Everybody's like so clean. 
you can eat in the bathrooms. Really? Yeah, it was so clean, I couldn't believe it. And everybody's so courteous and nice. Yeah, I think the culture is just very polite there. Yeah. And it is not here. In Japan or Germany? Uh, Japan. Oh, Japan? Uh, I think a lot of people are more polite than uh -huh. we are. Oh, they were like so nice and courteous and I was, I was like, everybody was treating everybody like royalty. I was so impressed, actually. That's the first time I've been in Japan, and I couldn't believe how nice everybody was, and everything's so orderly. There's a lot of cars in traffic, but no honking. Really? Yeah, no honking. Everybody just patiently wait, and we're like, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> it looks, My kids can't imagine that here. Oh, no. It, it, looks like, it looks like New York, like because I was in Osaka downtown. Uh -huh. It was like so many cars piled up, right? So you're thinking people are honking and try to cut in? Nothing. They're just patiently waiting. <laughs> they're like, wow, this is a culture that everybody needs to learn from. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was amazing. And every place we go, like restaurants, stores, everybody's so courteous, so helpful, always smiling. I say, wow, are, are they like robots or what? <laughs> they, they actually look like that. They were so like amazing. I was so amazed by the whole country. So... And I heard Germany's like that. Everything's so orderly and clean and nice there. So where, where else did you go back then? Just Germany or you oh, went to other I went all over Europe hitchhiking after college. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. I haven't done that yet. Uh, really? Yeah, we everywhere but Spain and Greece. Really? Everywhere in Western Europe. Although we had to go through the East Germany uh -huh. to get to Berlin. Uh -huh. Because it was still East and West there. Oh, wow. Yeah, but the wall was still there, huh? Yeah. So you went hitchhiking with who? Like a couple, oh, no, couple of people? Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. So how, how long was that? Like how long did you hitchhike? Three months the whole summer. Really? Yeah. Wow. And then nothing happened? Like, a, like a nothing? No. It's all really nice. Really? Wow. It's, it's, uh, it's safer back then, huh? Maybe? Oh, yeah. Everybody hitchhiked. Oh, really? Yeah, so it was a pretty common thing. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Wow, in the, in the early 70s, huh? Yeah. The hippies still there? Hippies? Uh, Were you like a hippie? Uh, at that time, yeah, there was some. Everybody, everybody was, right? In the 60s, right? Yeah. In the, in the Europe was like that too, or uh, just? No, not as bad. Uh huh. Still the, the, the Beatles were big then? Oh, yeah. Yeah? So you went to England too? Wow. Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Austria, Germany, Switzerland, wow. Italy, yeah. Wow, that's, Spain, am Spain Greece, so. that's amazing. Well, time to go back to those two countries that you didn't, you yeah. didn't visit. And probably don't hitchhike this time. No. no. <laughs> no. You probably like comfortable beds now. Right. Right? Yeah. So you, you know, I was impressed when I was there. I was thinking, it's it's really hot now here. All uh, over there, it's raining and cold. And uh, everybody goes either too hot or too cold. Uh, and I think, how did all of these people in Europe fight for all of these many, many years and decades and centuries? And then I realized the people who were doing that, deciding about that, uh -huh. were the generals or the kings or whomever, they weren't up there in the hot and the cold and all that. Of course. So that's why they did it. Somebody was fanning them the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we're done here. She's going to continue with the fungus program next month. I'm going to see her then and then see how we progress by taking photos and everything. And we appreciate uh, you cooperating and talking to me about your nails and everything and your wonderful trip to uh, Europe. So thank you, Mary. Well, I always enjoy being here. Thank you.